Good morning, you fine people joining us here at the Flow Show. I hope you're all doing fine and dandy today. Good morning, Mr. K-Man. How are you doing, sir? Good morning, Ryan. Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, I'm doing all right. Watching those uh, sleepy markets right now, but I'm sure it's going to change towards the end of the week. So we're always ready for what's to come. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm getting to the point I might have to order some Lego to do at my desk while I'm sitting here waiting for something to happen. But uh, yeah, uh, something will happen eventually. We know that for sure. Awesome. Right, let's uh, talk about what has happened before we talk about what may happen. Um, over at the Bank of Japan, the BOJ is apparently going to discuss the rapid slide in the yen at this week's policy meeting. According to the Nikkei, uh, these days it wouldn't be a BOJ meeting without getting some sources drops in the days leading up to it. Um, the Nikkei P saying that many at the central bank believe that the weak yen is not currently adding to inflation. Um, that's a, a situation that a lot uh, of other central banks are starting to circle around in terms of uh, FX levels. Um, one of the uh, Celia Rune, senior ruling party members or executives in Japan says there is no broad consensus right now, but if the yen slides further towards 160 or 170 to the dollar, that may be deemed excessive and could prompt policymakers to consider some action. Um, bit of a strange comment, putting numbers on it like that that uh, it, some aspects can give it a green light to keep going. If uh, I don't think uh, that any action will come until 160 or 170. Um, but there you go. That's politicians for you. Um, over in, still, well, sticking with the government, uh, the latest economic assessment was largely unchanged. Uh, they see a gradual recovery despite some sluggishness. A uh, bit of data out from Japan, PPI numbers, um, well, services price index there, coming in at 2.3% versus 2.1% previously. So a little bit uh, hotter there. Prior was revised up as well to 2.2%. So that's uh, some good news on the uh, Japanese front for inflation. Uh, Kay, what are we doing at this uh, 155 level? Are we going to break it before... BOJ or we're going to break it yeah. after? Or wow, to we're too close not to it. <clears throat> and it's not your 152. Uh, it, it's it ha it's not the kind of rejections that we saw just ahead of 152. So that makes me think that uh, it's not as big. I can imagine some some Japanese interests are up uh, at, at various levels, uh, exporter offers, likely slowing um, the process, giving uh, giving liquidity to those who still need to buy dollars, the rest of the dollar perhaps doing a little less um, good right now, um, keeping it from breaking, but it's, uh, it's not looking as if it's such a, a huge uh, level as the 152 may have been with all those big barriers and things. Um, I'm seeing a lot of protection uh, that doesn't feel like it. So I guess we are uh, barring um, surprise, uh, negative US data. Uh, we we um, we may have a look through it, and and then if you look at yesterday, um, albeit not dra no dramas in the in the US data, but uh, a bit weaker than expectations and the prior numbers. It still had a thirty pip effect, and then we're we're already back to where we were. So yeah, I think uh, it's going to trade above. Whether it stays above into Friday is a different uh, is a different uh, uh, subject. Um, so yeah, um, people still talk a lot about question. that. At 156, uh, the famous 10 big figure move, Kanda uh, uh, called um, during a month to be excessive, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's all it's all waiting for uh, for Friday, and uh, but I still yeah. maintain Friday could be a really hot day um, if nothing happens. Uh, nothing happens before we do have US data. Before uh, we've seen that. Japanese data are rarely uh, moving the needle for the yen. Um, so, yeah, I'm um, yeah. I'm on the outlook for what's to happen on Friday. Uh, I'm, yeah. I may actually, if we get a spike through 155 and a little bit of an acceleration, I've, I've already got to put in place, but uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm still a bit long, um, small dollars elsewhere, and I may actually um, just give a, a 
little bit of a tactical uh, sail in Dolien if we if we creep or fly anywhere closer to that 156 uh, ahead of Friday. Yeah, I mean, it, as we creep closer to Friday, you know, thoughts keep going through your head and, and whatnot. I, when I look at it, I see very low reasons or little reasons why Yen will strengthen, unless they pull a rabbit out and, uh, you know, pull a hike out. Even forecast going high, it just seems that in any which way they turn, um, doesn't seem like yen will strengthen at all or, or significantly. No. So it it still favours that whatever they do, at some point we're going to go up. And mm -hmm. if if the market's waiting for the BOJ to get over that hump, then uh, it's a formality. Like you say, we go through one fifty five, but then does that you know increase the intervention risk even more? I mean, they must. UADA must know that if his if their forecasts are not going to, you know, CPI forecasts are not going to significantly go higher if they're unchanged or maybe even come down a pip, that's negative. If they don't indicate strongly or about the next rate hikes, that's going to be taken negatively. Um, them and the MOF must know that if they don't do anything that sends yen pairs lower, it's going to go higher and it's going to have another crack. So are they sitting above or are they going to sit above and knock it on the head this time? Mm. Yeah, and the thing is as well, if the Bank of Japan doesn't move on Friday, uh, which which is still the base case that they don't move, they may change something to the statements, the rhetorics. We all we already heard from Ueda that uh, he said that uh, uh, weaker yen may influence inflation, thus may yeah. influence uh, monetary policy. Um, but if they don't do anything on Friday, I mean, look at uh, look at the differentials in the in the yields. I mean, it's um, Japan uh, Japanese investors are still investing uh, outside because they have very little choice. The um, the, the ten year uh, JGB yield, which is the one that is the most watched, is still not at one percent. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we do know that they all that they also promised, even though they will be by less JGB JGBs this fiscal year, that they would step in if the market goes a little bit bananas. That means clearly to the top side of the yields, because they don't want the the, the bond market to derail in uh, in Japan because the government need to fund uh, um, trillions of uh, trillions of of yen. Uh, it's it's all uh, it's I think it, it's still a. Uh, a very big trap um, for the MOF. So makes me think that even even though I think Friday could be very hot, um, and um, I think the MOF, is, uh, yeah, the MOF is praying for for a little bit of a, a weaker US data uh, on on the US data front to to have more impact if they need to intervene. But in current context. Imagine they intervene and they put it down at 150. I think uh, the whole world um, uh, and all hairdressers and taxi drivers even will wait to buy Dolian <laughs> if they put it down to 150. They will not be able to keep it lower. Everything, all else equal, unless unless we get we get that very big surprise that that you wait a height. and yeah. and you know. It, it, there's base cases, there's things that, that we can completely rule out, and I would completely rule it out in, in uh, because of the fact that he said um, they would go slow, the inflation data are actually coming, coming down a little bit, but they are uh well below inflation on the interest rates look at look at look across the rest of the, the let's only look at the majors right um yeah. um the us is at five and a quarter five and a half where inflation is is running around three let's say three percent um to to make it easy some some metrics are above some below um the uh the eurozone is about the same they're at four 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 something and 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 where the inflation is uh, is slowly slowly uh, albeit sticky coming down. Um, England may be a little bit different, but uh, headline inflation is also uh, showing signs to come a little bit lower. All their interest rates are above or at least equal to where inflation is running. Japan is 2% below their inflate where, where their inflation is running, okay? Yeah. So there is this, this chance that that in, in, in my mind, which says that the 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 percentage of them, uh, the risk of them hiking is not zero this time. Yeah, and that 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 is what 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 I really want to uh, to to bear in mind. And if they do hike, 
then I think the market is going to 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 react to it probably for a bit longer than uh, than just having this uh, 50 or 100 pips drop uh, on on the uh, on the announcement and then uh, take massively the other way. Now it it all depends about the statement as well. But if they because if they just officialize 10 BPs or so, uh, the market is still going to to go like uh, have a shock reaction, algo reaction, and then uh, say like, well, 10 BPs versus. Uh, Versus four and a half, four sixty in the states on the ten uh, on the tens and or or five percent on the two year, uh, for instance. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be on the uh, a, a drop in uh, in the ocean, right? Yeah, exactly. And it should also be noted that whenever they've come in and intervened um, and acted, it's always they've always had backup with either the Fed changing its tone or the data turning. Um, the last uh, two times they intervened, we uh, you know we had that big obviously turn. Now that was when uh, the Fed also started turning, you know, getting towards the end of hikes and whatnot. And uh, you know we got a little cut the data wobbles. Same thing here. Um, so they've had they've had the US coming in to the rescue around about when they've intervened, and uh, maybe that will happen again. As you say on Friday, with this uh, PC data might give them a bit of respite. But uh, anyway, as far as hairdressers uh, front money in a 150 move, I know mine will be because uh, he's not made money out of me for the last 20 years. So uh, he needs to get his income some other way. Um, right, sticking with inflation, Australia as well, as you can see there, a swathe of green uh, coming in there, doing a bit like Canada with their inflation and try and have 80 different metrics to try and gauge it. Um, predominantly, most of them coming in below last month, so all lower. But uh, what they've all done is beat expectations in the main, uh, as you can see there across all the numbers. Year on year CPI 3.6%, but down from 4.1%. Uh, some of these are uh, Q1 numbers coming in that unchanged. This one a little bit higher, the monthly number, year on year weighted mean, blah, blah, blah. Um, all of that is pretty much higher for longer data as far as the RBA is concerned. So not really anything for them to get uh, the teeth stuck into inflation moving down, but uh, coming in stickier as well. Um, Rick Banks Thieden, speaking about inflation as well, says inflation has moved in the right direction. The latest outcome was significantly lower than our forecast. Uh, these guys are penciling May for a rate cut and uh, that inflation number would help that case. Um, also, going talking about uh, in interest rates elsewhere, say high interest rates abroad could also affect uh, the krona. And so the krona definitely remains an inflation risk. Over to the good old Bank of England, and uh, it's whack a mole with a with a doves and hawks. We had uh, Ramsden coming out and being all hawkish. Uh, since then, we've had Haskell coming out going the other way. And now we've had the chief economist Peel coming out as well the other way. Uh, it started off by saying a combination of little news and the passage of time have brought a bank rate cut somewhat closer. So he says the time for cutting rates remains some way off. Said uh, yesterday's PMI survey data supports his existing policy view um, and says there's greater risk of easing policy too early than too late. Uh, and told us not to get excited that headline inflation will fall to or below target. So and he'd err on the side of caution for cutting the bank rate. He says there's no reason for the BOE to move rates in lockstep with either the Fed or ECB. Um, the latest official data showing a big fall in employment should not be taken at face value. After those comments, uh, well, remember, after the Ramsden comments, we went from pricing, fully pricing September to fully pricing August for a rate cut. Well, now we're back at September uh, after those comments from him and Haskell. And we're pricing 49 pips a cut by the December 19th meeting. So roughly two cuts for that. Obviously, the pound has reacted, as you would expect. Um, all those lows in the quid are now been reversed um okay we're getting all this all the time now we one one lot comes out one side another lot comes out the other side market Crazy. moves both ways and then uh parks up in the middle i i found it well i mean crazy and hilarious at the same time. <laughs> at the same time you get you get bailey and ramsden <laughs> saying <laughs> saying that uh 
that they are, uh, if they can, they would have cut yesterday. Then you got the, the, the data showing something different. And then you got two other guys coming in and say like, well, hang on a little bit. We, we may not uh, uh, cut straight away. I mean, it's it's crazy. When you talk about Bank of England, uh, I mean, really, it, it's, it's a crazy lot, right? Um, and yeah, the market, uh, this, this reaction. So we had that. We had those those uh, an initial reaction on the back of uh, on the back of this this crawling back and and taking back what what their colleagues were saying. Uh, and then you and then you had a little bit of an add on there when uh, when the U.S. numbers came out. I think it's it's a case of people having been been short sterling too low on uh, on on the back of uh, of Bailey and Ramsden. Um, and then um, needing to 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 sc scramble back those who, who who sold a bit too low. Um, I was pretty well. <clears throat> not that I felt something coming, but yesterday um, we've been talking about those levels. I mean, starting to hold, and uh, despite bigger data, good data, uh, euro dollar don't break, not not breaking straight away. Sterling did its 100, 150 pips on the back of uh, on the back of uh, uh, Bailey and Ramsden, and. Uh, it's all like, and we know how the market trades as uh, whatever. And so I, I really did uh, uh, reduce uh, starting short to the max, even even flat. Um, so lucky enough, but um, I, I think we are still in the same in the same scenario. Um, can go up. It's like one step up, what's one step down? Probably. Um, it's interesting that we capped around that one twenty four. Um, 5070. Got a bit of a trend line there. Got a few, um, got a few fibs around there as well. Um, it, it's um, it technically it's behaving pretty all right. I must say the 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 sterling right now. Um, I think where we have um, where we have to screw back a uh, bit our expectations. Well, that's that's the feeling that I have at least, uh, and that's why I sold my euro sterling out as well as euro sterling. We had the runaway. Um, it, but it was basically just based on what uh, Bailey and Ramsden were were saying, right? So if you if you take pure the Bank of England uh, bots, uh, they they are like two two and uh, ball back in the middle. So um, I think yeah. Euro Sterling perhaps the expectations have to be um, yeah just scaled back a little bit on uh, on what's going on there, and we are likely um, what I think just just back in ranges uh, there right now, albeit. A range which is likely <clears throat> 50 or so pips above where we were before. If, if we were trading um, 85 and a quarter, 85, three quarters before roughly, uh, or 20, 80, we may now be trading 85, 80, 86, 30. And then that, that's so roughly where I see it. If you look at, uh, uh, if you quickly look at what the uh, at what the options are saying, the euro sterling options are still, uh, well, is still below 4%. So the, the even if it's like a tad higher than than what it was, the 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 option market is still very relaxed in 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 euro sterling as well. Um, so yeah. basically, that's it. Um, respect the, the the levels on that cable, and now we are back uh, to to watching uh, US data. I guess into the end of the week uh, to know what's really going to happen. Yeah, exactly, mate. And uh, yeah, I did the same. I, I screwed back some of my euro sterling longs uh, last night, nineties in the nineteen ninety three. I think I did. Uh, just to take a bit more off the table. I'm still happy to play the range um, down to 95s. Uh, and one of the reasons I'm still happy to stay in this trade uh, long euro stone is that, you know, when the Bank of England do start cutting, there may be a bit of a gap at the moment. And there may be the higher for longer risk at the moment. But when they do, they're going to have to come down more than uh, the ECB will have to come down. And Agreed. then once, once rates get to roughly the same level, then you're... you're your trade is matching up who's a bigger economy and that that favors europe over the uk uh, all day long you know 27 28 countries versus the rest exactly 19 countries versus one so that weight differential uh as far as my strategy is concerned is would favor the euro just on that basis but lots of water to go under the bridge before that happens and uh, we'll see what it does but other than that i'm i'm just going to ping pong the range uh, off the long side um, right, ECB, and uh, we have one semi-hawkish holdout left at the bank. ECB's Nagel says he still needs to be convinced that is that inflation is heading back towards target. 
before rates can be cut. Uh, wants to see more data before committing to a June cut. Uh, says he sees momentum picking up in the German manufacturing sector. Um, back on cut, says a June rate cut is not necessarily followed by a series of rate cuts. Uh, is not fully convinced that inflation will actually return to target in a timely and sustained manner. That's uh, the German uh, in him coming out strongly there. Um, when we've got Hawkey Holtzman even, uh, you know, lining up and happy for cuts, uh, how long before uh, all the doves are waiting for Nagel in the bike shed uh, ECB HQ for the next meeting to give him a good shoeing? Mm -hmm. He seems to be the, the last holdout, mate. Managing expectations, I think. Um, uh, it, okay. Germany Fitting into is, a strong wind. <laughs> Germany is still, uh, yeah, but Germany is still has still a very loud voice, right? Um, in in Europe in general, I think he's he's more managing expectations. The one that I find who's gone extremely quiet is is uh, the Dutch guy. Not uh, he's. He's he's flipped around. He said, um, but he but he's only been speaking like once somewhere, and uh, haven't heard from him uh, from him since because he used to be uh, with Nagel uh, and, and Holtzman and perhaps one or two more from from the Balkan side. Um, he used to be very hawkish as well, but he's he's gone extremely silent. Uh, perhaps Lagarde looked him up somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I think Nagel is, is more managing expectations right now. Um, he, he's not. I don't think he's completely cut of us, but he wants to keep everybody with uh, with their feet on the ground. Um, if you'd let Villeroy and Centeno rule the game, they they would cut every meeting from uh, from June, right? And I think yeah. he wants to counterbalance that, and it's sort of done on purpose. Um, that that's what I think because he did say before now trying to fight back against uh, or, or or taking the cautious approach he did say once that he that he agreed with it and i reckon that he he saw the market reaction or or people reacting not 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 specifically euro euro crosses or whatever uh, straight away although it had weighed on the, on on the euro somewhere because they all turned um but i think now he's back and that's managing expectations rather than uh, than much else to be honest yeah, but if, if any other Eurozone country faced the economic problems Germany are facing right now, they'd be screaming for cuts. And it just shows you that, you know, Germany always, Germany always has a, their thing is always inflation. You know, they're always shit scared of inflation rallying higher or uh, not being where it should be. Um, yeah, because even at the behest of the economy. Mm. He's, he's waiting for the, the water level of the Rhine to rise again to uh, change his tack now. Well, good luck with that one. There's a heat wave coming, apparently. Um, heat wave going on in Spain. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's that's let's face it. Uh, being one of the manufacturing uh, engines of uh, of Europe, that's not looking extremely good for Germany uh, coming summer either. Yeah, so that's uh, going to be a problem. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, someone saying it's going to be 26 degrees in in the next week or so. So uh, yeah, time to get the old string vest out. I think. Right, anyway, let's crack on. Um, yes, they've got a bit of data out. It's not on the calendars as usual. Uh, Philly Fed services activity coming in uh, less crap than it did last month, minus 12.4 versus minus 18.3 previously. Um, we also got the S&P Global manufacturing services PMIs um, and both looking a little bit smelly. Manufacturing was expected to rise a pip, actually went backwards into contraction, so quite a significant drop there. Services as well, we'd seen largely decent surface numbers uh, across the globe in the other PMIs, um, but that went backwards as well, was expected to rise, went down instead. So this one's not as big as obviously the, uh, the ISMs, but it still gave uh, the dollar a little bit of a kick in the pants. Um, sent euro up over 107, managed to get a 28 30 pip drop in uh, dollar yen. Um, not overly bad, you know, as I say, we'll have to wait for the ISMs to get some real data. Um, new home sales, on the other hand, was a bit of an improvement, beat expectations. So, uh, seeing many of those last uh, numbers existing and uh, starts and permits. Uh, not shown through in sales, at least uh, the slowdown in those uh, prior numbers. 
Um, house prices, the median house price was 307, uh, sorry, 431K. I'm just going to round it up, um, which was down 1.9% from prices a year ago, but was up from 406,000 uh, as a medium last month in Feb. So we jump in prices there. Um, and that's it. That's all I got, folks. Uh, Kay, anything else? No, no, no. It's been extremely quiet, right? Um, yeah. Some of the, exactly. um, I, I don't know. Just, just in between, just something that uh, rolled off the press uh, a few minutes ago is the China telling their brokers to limit exposure to snowball derivatives. Um, it's just a, a way of um, trying to keep uh, risk in. Um, in uh, in check um it, it's it's those fact those those kind of derivatives are are what we can uh, compare to uh, power jewels um as uh, for for people familiar with uh, with what um, um japanese corporates uh, used to do in the in in the past and some playing as well that means that you get some return for as long as a certain asset remains in inside a certain range but once it blows you lose every protection and um you um you you basically look at can be looking at uh, at at very hefty losses so um uh, they want to to rein that in now um and uh it, it didn't really have too much of an effect on uh, on on the chinese yuan but um i, I it, it it is this one little more step from uh, by by china to get perhaps a a, a firmer grip back on uh, on things um, it's a very small step, but um, it's one of those steps that we need to to just put in the list of oh tick 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 tick. You know, um, they are doing this. Uh, on on the yeah. other hand, I do also think that um, um, a lot of what's going to go happening in the, in in the well, let's say dollar China is going to depend on the dollar, but also what's happening in the commodity sphere and uh, and. And actually, gold. If we if they don't come in and uh, and and continue to buy gold, I think it may be that uh, most of it is done. And then I would suspect that perhaps dollar China is maybe going for a walk higher again. But uh, let's see. In the meantime, they they are trying to um, to get a control over uh, over everything. Yeah, and the the exposure to that is uh, some forty six billion dollars, according to UBS. So it's not. It's not, a, it's not small. Uh, it's not small, but it's not a uh, a crisis amount, shall we say? It's not going to collapse the financial system in China if it went pop. Um, well, even less so now they're shutting it down. But uh, yeah, not a small amount, but not a big amount to, to cause real problems, particularly to China. Um, can I just check? Uh, I don't know if it's me. I heard you just breaking up a little bit now and again, Kate. Mm. Um, oh, am I, I the same? Are you hear that from me or? I hear you perfectly. Yes, I don't know if you've got a little bit of uh, wobbles on your internet or something. It's okay. not significant, yeah, it's just uh, every so often. I just wanted to check uh, in case it was me uh, that was having the issue. But, uh, no, it could, it could be my, my side. I think uh, um, apparently Big Ben uh, has stopped uh, ticking uh, around 9 a.m. Must, must be um, impacting my internet. <laughs> yeah, you've got too many uh, games open while you're waiting for something to happen. That's what it is. <laughs> Just shut some of them games down, mate. Um, right, let's have a, a butchers around what's going on. Um, Euro Sterling, yeah, as mentioned, failure up at the zone, um, back down under 86. Uh, you know, there's, there's times when you get moves, especially in pairs like this, it, when it makes a move, right, it's made a move, it's got to do more. Uh, it hasn't done more at the moment. So are oh, we going to go back into the box here? Um, and just to stick to this uh, boring range. If we get back below this 80s, 70s area, um, then we're going to be messing around in this area again once more. Um, so it's, it's becoming wise. We've seen it so many months now. You've, if you get a, get moves in, in pairs that haven't walked anywhere for a while, you've got to take your profit off the table just in case you get a reversal. Um, Aussie dollars, another one. Um, you know, Big old zone here, been on my chart for yonks and yonks. CPI moves, everything else, up we go to the zone, nibble in it, and then pop, we come back down again. Um, you know, these levels, they stay on my chart. I don't, it's not that we necessarily trade them. You maybe buy or sell there, you can do, but it's, it's 
when you're in a trade, you've always got to watch where your trouble areas are. It's no good buying 64s, 64 and a half and saying, yeah, this is going to, I'm, I'm going to set a target at 68. If you can't get through these areas, you're not going to get your 68. So you've got to ask a question. What are you going to do with your trade if you're not going to get through here? Uh, and for, for the likes of me, I know Kay's the same, you take some profit, you take a bit off the table and then you, you wait and see. Maybe it does move through. Okay, fine. You're not going to make as much. But, if it does reverse all the way back down and you had a chance to take some money off, you haven't blown that chance and sitting here back down near your entry thinking, why didn't I take some money off the table? So these, and the other thing this thing shows is that these moves, they, they lack a bit of conviction. Yeah. It's a fairly strong move, you know, up from there on the back of a bit of data and whatnot, but you know, it runs out of puff at one of these zones and then, you know, look at it for context. Yeah, it's a big zone short term, but, you know, it's nothing in the bigger trend. It's just a zone that's had a lot of traffic at it. So you've got to think, you know, market hasn't, yeah, it's going to move, but it hasn't got conviction to really make a move. You know, a move, a proper move is getting up to 66, and then you start thinking about what's next. Um, and we're getting a lot of that at the moment in a lot of pairs. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, Euro dollar. A lot of people in our chat room absolutely lined up to smack this uh, 10720s, you know, and a few people started getting in about on this break here. And that's the right thing to do. You know, we had a little move above. Can it hold it? Tried holding it, tried holding it, then it falls out of bed and uh, that's enough. And down we come again. And now we look at this uh, 106.70s, 80s area back under there and we're back in all that noise again. And uh, we're still maintaining 106, 107 as a bit of a range uh cable probably might have to uh we'll see what happens at 125 but we might have to extend this range we we're looking at 123 124 short term might be now be 123 125 as a as a wider edge obviously we've got some resistance coming up 124 80 85 that sort of area just back of those two highs but uh yeah again we're back in the noise we've had a move one way we've had a reversal and now we're in what next mode? You know, where are we going to go? Back down to 123, maybe up to 125. Who knows? We're all watching data. We're all waiting for the next headline, next central bank comment. Um, so, again, if you've been long in this one, you've got to be worried about the fact that we can't break and hold above 124 and a half um, because that at the moment has been a bit of a pivot area as we've shown time and time again. Eh? Historical level goes back uh, much further than that when we've had a lot of action there. Uh, as you can see, 124.50 all the way through there. That's why it's a level. That's why it stays on the chart. Something usually happens around there when we get there. Um, as for some of the other bits and bobs, dollar CAD, that's still holding. Uh, I probably could have made my money this week trading this one off that bloody 135 um, and a, or 136 and a half. Uh, 55s it's got down to. Keep bouncing, keep bouncing. Um, so it's showing up again. Again, just one of these old levels that you have on your charts and you just keep an eye on. Bounces, though, still looking pretty weak. We're not even getting back to 137. So it's not out the woods just yet. You know, same old pattern, lower lows, lower highs. So if it fails below 107, then maybe that's the time we get a move down through that 136.15. Off it goes again. However, if we hit 137 up here, 136.90, come down, hold 136.50 again, then maybe we get a bit more of a solid bottom and we get a bit of reversal. But again, this could all happen over a data point or uh, some central bank head or whatever coming out. Um, fundamentally, there's no real reason for this to move uh, any which way from here. Um, stocks, I'll just have a look at stocks and I'll bang it over to Cayman. Uh, S&P had a little carve up that got through this 4050 area we had a bit of resistance there on monday carved through it yesterday now we're back above this is likely to become support now uh and see if if that holds then maybe we're pushing up a bit further and then we're going to be having a look at one uh, 5100 next zone isn't until we get to uh the high 51s even though we've got some intermediate levels around here but this is the main pivot area at the moment hold that then we're going to push higher back below. Maybe we're going to challenge the lows once more. Came in, 
give me some inspiration, please. Huh? Today? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, no, but we have seen a few levels come up and, and allow me to show a slightly different picture than yours in the cable, because this is one that I showed yesterday as well. And I was already talking about this level in uh, on, on face as well. Um, so we we went back above this uh, 123.65.70 after hitting um, 123. And I said like, well, watch, perhaps we can we can grind up into this uh, well or move up into this uh, into this bit of resistance i do have resistance at 124 um call it 5570 and that's exactly where uh, where we stopped so this is an area of interest to me especially with um more us data uh, coming up for the uh, in the latter part of the um, of this week so that is a bit of a zone that i'm going to um to ver quite closely uh, monitor um, and then, of course, ab above there, if it would go, we're talking about the 125, 125, 20, and then this zone here. Um, if it would fly higher, this is going to be a biggie, in my opinion, 125 and a half, all, um, up to 125.70. But first things first, and uh, ranges being what they are still right now, I think it's good enough to have a, to have a bit of a look here at what's happening um, in this uh, 55.70 zone, which is the high yesterday little overshoot of this uh, small trend line and then uh, we, we came back down so that's an interesting one and speaking about sterling with bank of japan close to where uh close uh now to uh, uh coming up um sterling yen uh, i've i was thinking the the uh that, that there would have been resistance between this 191.60 and then uh, 192 the figure but then uh uh, Pill um, and um, what's the other one? I forgot his name. Haskell um, turned around the the Sterling turned around the uh, the, the cable as well, um, and and we are back towards the top end of this uh, triangle. But this is one, and of course we need a bit of a of a little bit of a. I'm not saying going to say deep pockets, and it's against what what funding tells you to do, right? But if just if we we would expect something about interventions or so, we are in this this quite interesting zone on the uh, on the sterling yen here, anywhere between 192.60. We we went up actually um, last night and overnight um, up close to this 193 again. You see this this zone is. Um, Bit of a zone of interest, I think. And if uh, if uh, you want to play an intervention or a possible surprise by the Bank of Japan, and thinking that sterling is perhaps finding a bit of resistance in the mid 124s in the cable, this may be perhaps a bit of a candidate to try it. Um, if it, if we get back above uh, 193 and a half, skies will open again. Um, I've got really nothing up to 196, so. Uh, Above 193 and a half, it's it's wrong and uh, and abandoned sheep. Okay, um, but um, th this one could be an interesting one um, to to trade for a couple of hundred points if we see uh, if we see a reversal of this one. Uh, just one that I'm uh, that I'm keeping a an eye on. Um, yeah, the Aussie you showed it already. 65, 25, 45. The the it's, it's becoming a real magnet. This one. I'm not going to to repeat uh, endlessly what we've been saying. Um, 59 and a half Kiwi. Um, have a look. We we had a bit of a spike up there. We're trading around 35 right now, but it looks to show up again. This uh, 59 and a half again. So um, that's your first little level to the top side. 59, obviously to the downside. All right. Um, Swiss. Okay, because uh, we are back to more interesting levels. Um, we are back to the 61.8 in the Euro Suisse of the 2023 dump. Um, we've had a bit of activity around it, but I'm, I would say, like, respect the level. Um, it, it is it is perhaps worth, if one's long Euro Suisse like, uh, like I am, uh, I've taken a little lick off here. I'm still looking in... in broader in in the broader um picture for this to move higher over time but um 
ECB may uh, may, uh, may may call a halt to this, um, but it's it's how shall I say? It is positive that despite uh, a, a big majority of ECB bots now calling for June to be a rate cut, that uh, the Swiss uh, Euro Swiss and and um, in particular. Um, did not react to it. That means that the Swiss is still weak enough to me to um, to, to continue to weaken right now. Uh, we are also back to more. No, that's the sterling Swiss. Sorry, I'm, uh, I was planning to show the uh, dollar Swiss. Yeah, the dollar Swiss. We are back into this zone as well. Ninety one forty up to ninety one and a half. Um, we need, as I've been saying before, when we were in this zone and close to this zone, we need a close above to move up into the 92s for a starter. But then if you look, if and if you compare it to the 2023 move in Euroswiss, and for as long as um, the dollar um, data don't fall out of bed, um, but I'm, I'm not sure, we have, to, we have to wait for that, but uh, for as long as the dollar data don't completely fall out of bed, I think there is still more weakness to come in the, in the medium term. Uh, that is in the next month, month and a half or so, and then we will see. Now, that is all with ifs, because uh, as Ryan and myself already endlessly uh, repeated, we are data dependent. And and to me, the next jobs report in the US is always going to be the next big one that we need uh, to watch. If that confirms uh, that it's still defying the laws of gravity, uh, this dollar Swiss is, is, is likely going to move continue to move higher and I would say like at least 94 and a half or so um, why not even why not even higher but um, let's uh, let's see for that time will tell in the meantime barring this uh, Middle East blip we see supports uh, holding up still uh, pretty well so that is still something that is uh, um, supportive to me um Euro Aussie um that's the 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 other side um i know magix is short in our room and uh, very well held by the way um but um yeah yesterday i didn't i didn't have the nerves to really enter a short position but uh it looks to me that this is going to find um resistance every time we we bang up in the 165s 165 and a half there is resistance coming up i i would not um root it out that it does it again. Um, of course, we are coming into support. Low 164s, 163, 50, 65 is going to be support. Perhaps we're just in inside a range, but I'd rather be uh, be a, a rally seller on uh, on this one right now. Um, Ali, can it go to 91.55? It's 15 points away, dollar Swiss, right? I mean, we moved up to what 45, 46 or so. Uh, of course, it can go there. Um, if Euro Swiss pierces this, this 70, 75, it's probably going to be there um, uh, relatively quickly. But just know that we have uh, US data and uh, the data are what is directing uh, what we are doing here um, in, in, in all those uh, dollar pairs, right? Um, gold, Trying to get above this 2026, trying to get above this 2026 again, failing, failing in the 30s. If we get a, if we get, we're, we're data dependent, but I would rather say that there is a better possibility to go and visit 22 and a half than there is to revisit the highs. Let's, uh, that this is just my feeling right now. Um, this is how I feel the, 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 the thing is because we, we're getting, <clears throat> Less of those uh, big spikes, of course, in the next on the next week, uh, uh, week US data it can it can spike again. But uh, all things equal, I, it looks a little bit like running out of puff to me, and we may see a bit of a move back into the twenty one and a half. Um, that's what I think. Um, same on the silver bounces, yeah, but um, then we get back to those highs. I. I'm gonna say I'm a, a little bit in doubt right now. I'm, uh, but I'm patiently waiting to 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 reload what I've sold up in those uh, in the 29s the other day. Uh, low 26s for a starter, mid 25s, uh, another little leg, and then see if any 
thing goes back down, but uh, over here, uh, by the time we are over here, I will probably be loaded up uh, full truck again if we see this uh, these these levels here uh, right now. And um, you know what? That is about it. I was going to show something else, but I forgot what it was, to be honest. Let me see if I can find it back. Uh... No, I'm. I don't. I don't have it. I don't see it anymore. What I was trying to show. Um, yeah, one fifty five ten uh, could be. If if it's a barrier hunt, it could be just one fifty five ten and then come back a little bit before. No, I'm going to leave it there. Um, Thanks, mate. Yeah, back over to you. Yeah. Yeah, the yield differentials are are not really moving much, uh, Ali, right now. Uh, bit of a ping pong, really. Yeah, exactly. Keep an eye on them twos and tens, five percent, or five point one percent, oh one percent, and four point seven percent twos and tens. That's your kick up, probably for another leg high in the in the buck. Uh, Michael was just asking about uh, how you trade stagflation in the US. Um, it's a bit of a difficult one to try and put it through really quickly. Um, I don't foresee stagflation necessarily. That would require you know real higher inflation and, and the, the economy really dumping um i think stagnation's more likely the case which you know by and large is what we've been seeing um in the us not so much in the us but in in the eurozone and uh uk and whatnot where you know growth has been anemic at best uh, and looks to continue to be so for this year so it's going to be trading similar to what we're trading now. If if inflation does pick up and it does move to a more stagflationary scenario, then yeah, the, you know, you're going to get all the uh, the world is ending cranks coming out. You know, inflation being high, rates being high. How is the US going to service its debts and whatever? Is that going to put pressure on? Um, all that sort of stuff will come flying out, and uh, the market, if it believes it, will take a Dow view to it. And you probably see yields shooting higher, and uh, the dollar getting dumped. Um, but where money goes after that is anyone's guess. Is not going to go to uh, a weak-looking eurozone or anywhere like that. So it'll be a messy trade whichever way it goes. But I don't really see that happening. Stagnation more is the risk, I think, uh, for that. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Kane? No, just that stagflation is a bad thing. It's really yeah. bad. Whether it is for assets or a currency, it's uh, it, it's really bad. That's where you see. If, if uh, huh? I was going to say, if we, if it is a stag, a proper full on stagflation situation, monetary policy can do absolutely nothing for it. It's one of those situations oh, okay. you've just got to let it go and let it play itself out, uh, however that may be. Um, right. It doesn't look to be the scenario right now, uh, and and no. you know what? It doesn't really look like to be a scenario that we can. Um, say or, or call with a relatively high percentage um, in in any of the countries. Yes, we had this this weak European and and UK zone growth together with high inflation, which could have been <clears throat> um, well, which is somewhere the definition of stagflation. But then we have seen um, different a different approach in the market, saying like, well, we 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 need to see growth below zero for for more than just what we've seen now and um also the reason why it hasn't been really traded as such uh or perhaps in parts it has but but it hasn't been traded as such it's because of the pandemic because the 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 pandemic has has shifted the ideas about how uh, during that period of, of accelerated cycles, we had a really, really accelerated cycle since the since the pandemic hit. So it's, it hasn't been really brought forward as um, a more uh, a, a stagflation uh, uh, play in 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 the countries because it it was a health problem and uh, and and the whole world economy was affected by it. The whole supply chain was affected by it, and um, so. But uh, yeah, in general. Um, is it possible? It is possible. I mean, if if all of a sudden those those uh, and 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 again, I mean, I know that people talk about inflation, inflation, sticky. If central banks are are trapped, but I'm but I'm going to repeat. I think if the job market declines, Fed cuts, whatever happens, and whatever else happens in the, in in the inflation uh, environment. But if if they start to 
see a week much weaker i mean it's, it's not like a, a miss uh, uh coming out at 100k nfp when we expect 200 uh, no real real worsening of the of the job market that is that's going then we are going to start to talk about these scenarios if, if inflation yeah. stays higher if, but, if but, you want to if yeah. you want to put a rough uh pencil drawing over it michael if you're smelling it you, you know if you start seeing if you start seeing cpi over five percent and we start seeing the economy posting negative numbers then then you're on your way but uh yeah i don't think we're there right now um anyway hope that's answered your question mate um obviously you in the chat room so you can badger us about that if you've got nothing else to talk about so uh go ahead um we'll call that a day for today thank you for coming to the flow show as always thank you mr key man for all your valued insight uh durable goods later that's uh, and canadian retail sales uh, the stuff on the calendar uh, other than that Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.